TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it. Just a little warning screen just in case, man. Twitch.com is where you can catch a live stream. Usernames at the bottom of the screen. And we also got Patreon. We post seven to ten times a week. You British British uh, television series, British movies, and Premier League. And anything that so happens to get blocked on YouTube goes on there as well, man. This is Camp Pay Will Take It Away, Season 5, Episode 20. You see it in the title, man. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Latest government figures reveal that over 68,000 households are currently affected by the benefit cap, with the majority losing over £2,600 per year. Single parents now make up 70% of households who've seen their benefits capped, putting them at greater risk of homelessness. You know what you should do? Get a bicycle and drive Deliveroo. Make it back up. 27,730 single parent households were classed as being officially homeless by the, their local authority. Dang. High Court Enforcement Agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are on their way to Hyde, Manchester, to evict tenant Michael Higgins. But this isn't going to be a straightforward case. Uh, oh no! We have got a combined route of control and a route of possession. Oh, you're joking. Uh, I'm not. I wish I was. The agents have two jobs to do here. The first. Damn. First and foremost, when they said Manchester, I knew it wasn't going to be a typical average job. I knew a negativity was going to be associated with it. Yo, this is my... Of control and a writ of possession. Oh, you're joking. Uh, I'm not. I wish I was. The agents have two jobs to do here. They evicting them and taking their possessions <laughs> because they didn't pay rent? That's tough. Imagine trying to get... The first is to repossess the house, while the other is to recover rent arrears Mr. Higgins owes his landlord. How much does he owe? The balance at the moment is £8,283. So everything in the place. Mr. Higgins, who lives in the property with his teenage son, has not paid any rent for 18 months. The landlord took the case to the High Court, and now Mr. Higgins must leave. How do you let it go on for 18 months, though? Like, this is what I be mean. After the first month... After I, after you get that late fee and don't pay, I'm going straight. I'm giving you. I'm sending the eviction note. I'm sending the the vacate the 15 or however many the state or county requires. I'm sending however many days notice of you to get out. If you don't listen to that, I'm straight to the courthouse. 18 months is ridiculous. The business acumen of that landlord is very low. You lost so much money. Instead of four months loss, you lost 18. Today. So what do you think, what is he gonna do? He's gonna pay in full. And then start packing. And then start packing. Yeah, chance will be a fine thing. We can only hope. We can only hope. But on arrival at the property, Stuart and Vic are in for a shock. Oh my God, that looks like a squat from the outside. Look at the lovely houses next door, and this one at the end. How's the landlord allowed to get to this? Mm. All right. Looks like I've judged too early. <laughs> I'm from the backtrack. Listen, look at the lawn care. That's a landlord thing. The tenant don't take care of that. Is this a is this a slumlord? With no reply. The agents check round the back. Put some gloves on, guys. 
dog. Oh, stinks of piss. Dog shit. Everywhere. The house seems to be empty. But then a neighbour appears. Probably took the kids to school. Right. Oh. Well, the one we need to get rid of him for fucking ages. This is going today. Is it? Well, yeah. Oh, sorry, mate. Thanks for that. Whilst the agents wait for Mr. Higgins to return, the letting agent arrives. So what's the story then? Just like, basically, he's just not been paying yeah. for the event on it. Grandma needs to sell it because he's just so, not been uh, rent on it. Uh, it's like 18 months now. Good luck trying to sell it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then Vic spots something. This is what I be talking about when I be saying some people on benefits don't deserve a chance. Like, this is what I be saying. Like, some people are so used to having nothing. When they get something, they treat it like it's nothing. And look, this is a prime example. But you can't really feel that. You don't You can, You don't know. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still holding. Why is this doing this every time? Normally it stops. I'm trying to sell it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then Vic spots something. There's someone upstairs still. Someone upstairs, mate. Send the link. It seems there is someone in the house after all. Upstairs, top window. window. New pen game two versus two. Someone's who is inside. Orion and cheese versus so track and interest GB? Got a written possession for this property today, so you need to open the door. If not, we'll force it open. We have got a locksmith no on route. With no response, the agents head round the back again. Hello, sir. We're High Court Enforcement Agent, so we've got a written possession for this property, right? So you need to open up, sir. Finally, the back door opens. Is that a tree? Oh, hi, mate. Right, right, dog! Let me talk. Come in. Come on. Right, why is this? Come on, help me out. Right, so basically what it is, we've got a written possession to take over the property today. Right. Okay, so we can give you half an hour to get what you need. Half an hour? Yeah, I'm afraid. You can come back for the for your belongings. It's yeah, you can come back for the rest of the stuff. We Today's the beginning this. of the process. So what you need to do today is just get your um, clothing, medication. Anything else that you need. Because you can come back in the next... That brother is swaying. He's definitely off some class A. It's for your goods. Your goods will stay here. But it's been sorted out. Yeah, it's been, sorted. been sorted out isn't, doesn't mean no, it's getting paid. No, it's been sorted. Right, well... I was, I was unaware that it wasn't being paid at all. And then I got a letter a couple of months ago. I went down to the housing and to sort it out. And it Send the link. As far as I'm concerned, it's been sorted out. Right. So I've not heard anything off anybody. I didn't even have a knock on my door off me. I'm more than nothing. No. And I've been on housing benefit for all the time that I've lived there. I've lived yeah. there 12 years, mate. Oh, wow. Right, OK. It appears that the amount of housing benefit Mr Higgins receives was capped 18 months ago. And his payments since then haven't been enough to cover his rent. Despite his claims oh. that the situation has been rectified, the High Court writ means he must leave today. Yeah, they want Buddy out of there anyway. He is not taking care of this place. Like I said. In this property with you, sir. My son. Who else? Just you, so just you, sir. Me, my son and my dogs. Okay, yeah. right. Got nowhere else. Uh, got nothing else. Nowhere else to go with my dogs or anything. Uh, you can go to the housing office. The housing office will rehome you, especially if you've got your son. Yeah. You can put you in emergency accommodation. And the documentation you need for that as well sits in there. Clearly in shock, Mr. Higgins gets his father on the phone. Get out of the house. I've got half an hour to do it. It's a horrible position to be in, isn't it? That must be for you, so I'm like, I'm yeah. not. And y'all still ain't even really broken the news yet that y'all come to collect $8,000. No, no, I understand. While Mr. Higgins starts to pack, Vic takes a look around the house to see if there are any assets worth removing to offset the £8,000 he owes. Hang it up. All the rooms are full of clutter, and it soon becomes clear there's nothing of any value here. And it's not stars. Two bedrooms. Just pretty much the same as this. Yeah. If you can't pay your rent, then it's doubtful that they're going to have any goods that are actually worth taking control of. And ultimately, we have to make the landlord aware that there's nothing much that really we can do. If he isn't going to pay you the rent, then 
I doubt he's going to have any goods that are worth taking control of. With nothing to take to offset the money Mr Higgins owes, all Stuart and Vic can do is complete the eviction. But with a locksmith now on site, Mr Higgins is getting agitated. I need to get out of the way a minute in. So I like takes the piss There ain't no reason to get agitated, man. You had a long time to fix this. Agitated. I need to get out of the way a minute in. So I like takes the piss so that the dog will be the out of the fucking house. Dick. Right, listen, mate, like, you're getting on my tits now, right? Now, out of my way, right? Otherwise, I am gonna find you fucking right out if you get in my way one more time. Uh, I'm fucking serious, mate. I am just gonna not fuck out of you if you get in my way one more time. With Mr. Higgins now making threats, this Got simple eviction has taken an ugly turn. It will take all of Stuart and Vic's experience to resolve the case peacefully. Can eight went out the off situation became heated. Right, listen, mate, I'll be right out if you get in the way one more time. Now, with Mr. Higgins' son back from school, the agents need to get the eviction back on track. Don't even work that door, mate. The outside lock is knackered, so you don't even, don't even bother changing it. Locksmith knows what he's doing, mate. Then Michael's father arrives. What's, what's the crack? What's it, what's it all? About eight thousand pounds. Hey, like a father, like son. Yeah, that's impossible. Though. It's also the guy. This is ridiculous, The fact of the matter is, although they were supposed to pay the rent, they didn't pay the rent. Oh, yeah, that's it, yeah. So... He's on, he's on, he's on social. This is it's a mistake. It, it looks sorted out. Well, it's gone past that stage now, sir. The landlord I'm, wants their property back. It's got a bit ridiculous if it's gone up to 8,000 pounds that the letter was law. Well, we've never had any notification or anything to my house or here. Say, he's, say, aware yeah. of, he's aware of this, uh, the housing problem, sir. He's aware of the problem. The landlord's got me down to press, and he's not even been in touch with me there. His, his dad got more chains than Mr. T, don't he? It's tough. No, sir. He's aware of the problem. The landlord's got me down to press, and he's not even been in touch with me there. He's even got my phone number. It is ridiculous. He's done everything that he can possibly do. For him, what's true for A 13 year old one. It's ridiculous. It's just, it's just not the allowed. When someone's about to lose their property or, you know, where they're living, uh, it can be a very emotional. I feel for them, but at the same time, the property itself is down bad. It looks terrible. You know what I'm saying? So, nevertheless, like, dang process I've seen grown men break down and cry yeah, and this. obviously it's a big shock whoever gets evicted so much emotion must go through that person's mind and we know this and that's why we try and do it in a very calm manner the agents have now been at the property for over an hour and mr. Higgins's time to leave the house is almost up hi mate how's it going you're nearly there yeah, yeah. all right mate. Right. Have you got everything that you need? Yeah, All right, mate. Mr. Higgins now seems to accept he needs to go, but his father is still protesting the eviction. They've let it get to this much. Have you seen a couple of grand? We could have sorted it out, I'd have paid it. But I haven't got that kind of money. I haven't got 8,000 pounds and a half. I just can't pay. If I had it, I'd pay. So. I don't know what they do. Now homeless, Mr. Higgins will have to apply to the council for emergency accommodation for him and his son. With the house back in the landlord's control, the letting agent can finally see the state of the property. Oh, it's touching me. Yeah. It's touching me, it's crazy. It's fresh, doesn't it? It absolutely oh, Quite literally, I am in a state of shock, I'm not going to lie. Oh, look at the roof. <laughs> oh, man. Hold on, let me, see. let me see if it pop up. The dad looks like he smokes fireworks. Now, that's that's crazy. That is creative. <laughs> that's petty. Yeah. Oh, no. Yo. 
yeah, I do, I do feel in some cases for the landlord because he's out of pocket on the rent side and now he's got to spend more money on the property to get it back to the level so he, he can actually rent it out again. At least 15 With the locks changed and keys handed it's over, the, the eviction is now complete. Right, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. Thank you. All right. I'm just. Cheers, Emily. See you later. It's like most possessions, you never know what you're going to get till you really get inside the property. To be fair, on this one, you've had warning signs the gardens have grown. You can smell the property outside, really. The house itself is completely ruined. I reckon you need a good 30 grand to get that house back up to scratch again. 30 years. I'll be right. About 30. Latest research reveals pubs and bars in the UK are increasingly struggling to stay afloat, with one in five experiencing significant financial distress. It's estimated that four in ten pubs in England will face increased business rates in 2017, putting them at risk of closure. Pubs across the UK are closing at a rate of 23 per week. Tradition. High Court enforcement agents Gary Ball and Matt Highway are in Bridge North, Shropshire, to collect a debt of nearly two and a half. What the hell is Gary doing driving? Gary, you don't drive. Do he be driving? This is the first time we see him drive. Half thousand pounds owed by a pub landlady, Miss Nicola Burton, and she owes two thousand four hundred and seventy-seven pounds. From the notes, it's rent arrears. Nicola Burton moved out of a rented property a year ago to become the licensee of a local pub. However, she failed to pay her ex-landlord the remaining rent she owed. How much? Looking for the Hare and Hounds pub. And it opens, apparently, at the same time as his dentist. You know what time that is? Uh -huh. 2.30. 2.30? 2.30. Oh, I get it. 2.30. The case was escalated to the High Court, and now Matt and Gary... This is a terrible dad joke, but I got it. ...we have come to the pub Nicola runs to get payment in full today. But although it's past opening time, the pub appears to be closed. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Looking for a Nicola Burton? I am a partner. What's you right? It's a High Court writ we're here to enforce today. For what? I can't give you the full details, but I can, as long as she says it's OK to her, I can tell you all about it. We should have to OK it first. Can you just give me five minutes? Yeah, of course. See what she's saying. Yeah, yeah, she's in yeah. Bed. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it seems Nicola isn't in bed after all. Hello. Hello. Nicola, is it? Yeah. Hi, Nicola. My name's Matthew Lyra. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. Yeah. I'm here with a High Court writ today against yourself. It relates to a CCJ uh, that was issued in the North I always had a question about some of these British bars or English bars. Like, a lot of them look like like there's somebody's downstairs steps with a door on them and they just release to the living room area. You know, y'all get what I'm saying? Like, this looks like somebody's family room. They just put a bar in it. And did a lot of people do that? Hampton County Court, which is why we're here. Right. There's an outstanding balance of £2,477.43. So we're commanded by the writ today to return the property to either collect that payment or to seize goods to the value of. That's what we're here to do. Can you pay this at all? You can't. Is anybody can help you with it? No. Okay. We're on the verge of going bust. With Nicola making it clear she's in no position to pay, Matt has to make the consequences clear. Okay. Well, we have no choice then but to carry on do our job, unfortunately, which obviously means seizing goes to the value of. Is there anything here that belongs to anybody else? Yeah. Got hold of this okay, have you got proof of that? Nicola claims that all the assets in the property belong to a company <coughs> she rents the pub from. She shows Matt a letter laying out the terms of her lease. Take that. Right. Take and have that. they got an inventory of what's actually owned by them? Because this is just... Bro, every time I click the video to pause it, it's like going to the... It's pissing me off. 
saying all fixtures and fittings, which obviously well, doesn't. The tables, the chairs, the bar pumps. Right, but have they got speakers. an inventory of that, of what, no. what they actually own? The document states that the leasing company does own the pub's fixtures and fittings. But it isn't the inventory Matt asked for. That letter in itself, for me, wouldn't be proof that the items here belong to somebody else. Them. I'll give them a call if you like, yeah. Matt gets the managing director of the leasing company on the phone. Hi, was that Miss Butler? Yeah. Hello there, my name's Matthew Highway, I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. I'm enforcing a High Court writ at a premises I believe you're the landlady of. The what for? It's, um, can I, can I tell the lady? You can have to, won't you? Yeah. It's for uh, outstanding rent arrears from a previous property. Oh, right, OK. The minute all I've got is a piece of paper to say that you own the fixtures and fittings, which isn't... Uh, that, that could be anything, couldn't it? Well, it's a rock stop and barrel. <laughs> right. Yeah, but if you, if you understand, if you understand, obviously, I mean, there's a... There's, for instance, there's a, a set of car keys on the back of the bar. I mean, they don't belong to you, do they? Well, so we have I to don't, determine. I a car. No, so we have to determine what actually in here belongs to you and what belongs to to to, to this lady. I'll have a look and I'll get back to you, okay? All right. If if you could make it fairly urgent, because the, the other option I've got is to remove everything and then give you seven days to prove it. So, you know, I'd rather not do that if you can prove it while I'm here. Right. Okay. Then I'll have a look through my files. All right, Miss Butler. Thank okay. you. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. So lock, stock, and barrel, they do that? Will you just come in and just rent it and run it? And take a portion of the proceeds and give the owner rent? That's crazy. Like, everything in here is mine. Everything. Furniture, games, everything. Like, I understand renting out the space, you know what I'm saying? But, like, everything in it? I'm pretty sure they only they get their liquor sent in and they do that, but like, dang. I will While they wait for the inventory to arrive, Matt and Gary go to see whether there are any assets of value in Nicholas' flat upstairs. There's a stereo here, mate, Samsung. It soon becomes clear that there is little of any value, and the situation is clearly taking its toll on Nicola. Is there no other way of sorting this out? Because well, that, look, I didn't know that it had got to this. But you're aware of the whole situation that's gone to the county court, and that you know. The, no, I haven't. Who, who's told her? Well, you, you must have done. You'd, no. be, you'd been written to. We wrote you at this address. At this address? Yeah, yeah. We wrote to you on the first. Of. Gave me until the 12th to sort it out. First of what? First of June. I've had no letter. Yeah. I've had no letter come to this mm. property because I'd have sorted it out. You've got a copy of the letter here. Yeah. I swear to you now, as I stand here, as he I've not received that letter. Well, it, it was sent. I mean, you'd have to check with your postman what the issue is there because it's certain. No, certain, certain it's a waste of time fucking arguing with them. Now, Nicola's landlady, Miss Butler, arrives. Hi. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. Good. There's a whole apartment out there. You're the lady I spoke to on the phone? Yes. Hello, how are you doing? You alright? Okay. Off the highway. You brought me an inventory for. There's the inventory. Lovely, thank you. As I say, she come in with nothing, the same as the people before. We own everything. They come in with nothing, they just paid the rent for rent today. Yeah, that's fine. Obviously, we you know we have the job to do, and we have to prove that. Unfortunately, that. we can't just go back and say, "Well, somebody said that you know it belongs yeah. to somebody else." We so. got it, Matt. But that's fine. I accept that. Smashing. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Okay, Thanks. thank you. With proof that the company owns most things of value in the building, the agents are running out of options. So Gary goes to fetch the set of keys they spotted earlier from behind the bar and goes out to find Nicola's car. Found the key, a log book, it's this one here. Uh, what's it, the pan. With the car not worth the cost of removing, the agents have reached a stalemate. What happens like now, she's got no, she can't find the money. Well, uh, she the, owns nothing. At the minute, well, we'll have to well, come what, back. How much does she owe? 2,477. 
Why the landlady, the landlady, oh, know all her business? She talking bad about her. She owns nothing. So what you gonna do? Like, dang, Miss Ma'am. You know what I'm saying? Can you get my life out your business? <laughs> like, seriously, this is pounds forty three pence. But then Miss Butler suddenly leaves. And Nicola now wants to tell former pub landlord Matt more about how she got into this situation. We moved here to make a better life and it's just absolutely fucking crippled us. What is it, the rent on the building? Is it a severe high? How much is the rent? £16 a month. That is a lot, isn't it? I know, you're not even interested. We took 30 last night. I am interested and I understand your situation. I've been there and I understand it. I, I, I run pubs for a long for a long time, a lot of years. It's a big whack of money to find every month, isn't it? 1,600 quid. And if the trade's not doing it downstairs, that, that's how you get into a situation, isn't it? These pubs just don't make money anymore, Gary. We've tried everything. And I mean everything. Mm. But just then, Miss Butler comes back to the pub and she makes an unexpected offer. Will you accept a thousand pounds at this moment in time till she can try and sort something out? Um, I, I can check with the claimant whether they're happy to accept a thousand pounds. However, I would need to know when the rest of it was going to get paid. Well, obviously, I've just tried to raise a thousand pounds. Yeah, I appreciate your help. Now, it would have to be up to Nikki to try. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. sort the rest of it out. Yeah. Is that all right with you if I, give you, if I pay them a thousand pounds? That's well, a that good will leave. Is she a friend? That's good. Nicola. £1,477. £1,477. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Give me an offer of arrangement for the rest of that money. All right. I'll contact the claimant now. Hmm? Okay. Matt rings the office to see if the claimant will accept a £1,000 payment today, together with £100 a month, to settle the balance. Could you contact the client? OK, I'll get on to it now, mate. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Whilst they wait for the claimant's decision, Miss Butler leaves to go and fetch the £1,000 she's offered. So doing our job, you know, we meet lots of bad people. Um, it's really refreshing when you meet some, some nice people that are willing to help out um, their friends or tenants at, at a time of need. Um, it really is like a breath of fresh air. Five minutes later, the office call back. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I spoke to a client. Um, yeah, it's okay, but she needs to go on a three-month review. Because obviously it's a pub, isn't it? So if trade gets a bit better, she might have more cash. Right, okay, I'll make that clear. That's so it's been accepted then, Nicola, on with a, um, a three-month review. So in three months, they'll have a look at it again and see whether its situation has changed or not. Moments later, Miss Butler returns with a thousand pounds in cash. Yep, thousand pounds. Perfect. All right, we're all sorted. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks to the generosity of Nicola's landlady, the case is resolved for now. But as it will take over a year to pay off the balance, there may be tough times ahead. You know, she's clinging on to the pub more for the fact that it's somewhere to live, uh, rather than looking at the bigger picture and realising that actually the business is untenable. Um, she's going to sink in more debt, I think, by the, from what I can see. Um, but, you know, hopefully she'll get it sorted. They need... That bar needs a facelift, first of all. It's outdated, one... And then they need to serve, like, one good menu item. Like, one good, like, I gotta go there to get this type item. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Problem solved. Yep. Thousand pounds. Perfect. All right. We're all sorted. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Lisa. Cheers. Thanks to the generosity of Nicola's landlady... That is a W landlady. I've, I've never seen, like, I, I would have never expected that. That was the first unexpected thing I've seen in a minute on this show. The case is resolved for now. But as it will take over a year to pay off the balance, there may be tough times ahead. You know, she's clinging on to the pub more for the fact that... 
it's somewhere to live uh, rather than looking at the bigger picture and realising that actually the business is untenable. Um, she's going to sink in more debt, I think, by the, from what I can see. Um, but, you know, hopefully she'll get it sorted. At the end of the day, it is what it is, man. Hopefully she can pay the landlady back. Man. Really struggling. That doesn't pound. Poor girl. Matt and Gary got a result in a seemingly impossible situation. But in Stuart and... See, they be trying to get us. See, this is what I mean. There are four point... Research has shown that there are four point eight... It's like no matter what I do, buffering comes for me. You know what I'm saying? ...million self-employed workers in the UK, and the numbers are on the rise. Average value of self-employed earnings has dropped by more than a fifth since the beginning of the financial crisis. And over 50% of workers in this sector seriously worry about their personal finances. And the 60% of self-employed people survive, sur survey struggling with debt. L reader. High Court Enforcement Agent Stuart McCracken and colleague Ian Taylor are in Penrith, Cumbria. They're here to recover almost four and a half thousand pounds owed by a car salesman to a dissatisfied customer. Well, beautiful Cumbria. Yeah, Penrith in the Lake District, mate. Yeah, I was up here a couple of weeks ago. Stunning. Right, we're off to see a Darren J. Oliver trading as North Lake Cars. All right. How much does he owe? Four thousand three hundred fifty-nine pounds and fifty-six pence. The debt stems from a dispute over a faulty car. I'll tell you what, what a beautiful place to live though. Yeah, it's stunning, isn't it? Proper little chocolate box village. Never heard that. The case was escalated to the High Court, and now the debtor must pay the money he owes in full today, in either cash or goods. And Stuart and Ian immediately spot an expensive 4x4 parked on the driveway. And a lovely Range Rover parked on the drive. Like, is the customised number plate the has the debtor's initials on it. As it's likely it belongs to him, the vehicle could be useful leverage for the nice. agents. Right, let's go and have a chat. Far from it. Good morning, you okay? Um, I'm after Mr. Oliver. He's not in, sorry. Right. I live here, but it's um, the Sunderson. Are you able to get him on the phone? We're High Court Enforcement Agents. Oh, right. Um, From Direct Collection Bailiffs Limited. <laughs> right. Are, are you able to get him on the phone? So we need to get this sorted. We've got a High Court writ to be here. Right. Okay, I'll try and get No problem. Alright. As the debtor's mother goes inside to call him, Left Stuart door makes open. a peaceful entry. What is it about? It's, it's a high court writ it's regarding an outstanding balance that he needs to sort out. Right, okay. I say he doesn't live here anymore. Mm, mm. But as this is the address the notice of enforcement has been sent to, Stuart has every right to stay and investigate further. The woman quickly gets her son on the phone. Stuart not trying to hear nothing. She was, oh, right, right. He was... They was both looking at each other like this. Because right, right means that's the end of the conversation for the lady. But uh, no, it's not the end of the conversation for Stuart. Missed the peaceful entry. <laughs> I've had um, two answers. We're High Court Enforcement Agents. The High Court Enforcement Agents. I've had them in the house. Right. Yeah. The wolf. They walked in. Is that, is that, is that Darren, is it? Yeah. I just wanted to have a quick chat with him. Hey, he, just, he doesn't live here. Okay. Alright. Uh, hello, is that Mr. Oliver? 
Yeah, speaking. Mr. Oliver, good morning. My name is Mr. McCracken. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. I've got a High Court right here to execute at this address. We don't want to move out to that address. We don't even live at that address. All right. Well, there's a Range Rover on the drive with your initials on it at the moment. No, um, that's not to be dad's car. Is it? Okay, we need to see yeah. some documentation for that. Um, no, it's in the house. Yeah, no problem. Um, we're, we're literally here to collect a balance of £4,359. Yeah, no, I haven't got the money, I can't right. afford it. Yeah. Okay, so what we'll have to do is start removing goods from this address. Um, there's nothing there in my name, so you guys prepare yourself. So you need to see what you can do to try and raise this balance, okay? So I'll pass you back. There you go. Yeah. No. They're standing in the hall. Right, because he hung up, he thought it was over? Oh, Dara, you need to get here. I shouldn't have to deal with this. Are you coming up now? So he's got a laptop in the house then? Ian's ears are incredibly sharp, he's like a bloodhound. If he gets a sniff of something, he won't let it go. And uh, oh, that's the great thing about having me? someone like Ian by your side, because he will pick up on things that sometimes I might miss. A few... Nah, yeah, he, he, he think about the laptop. It's $2,000 over there. That's a start. You know what I'm saying? Ian by your side, because he will pick up on things that sometimes I might miss. A few moments later, the debtor's mother comes back into the hall. So you on your way up now? She got it in her in her pocket. As far as I know, it's coming. Okay, this way. Right. no problem at all. But after overhearing the telephone conversation, Ian needs to get to the truth. We've just heard him admit to having assets inside the house. There. Pardon? We've just heard him admit to having assets in the house. Then, the laptop and the white envelope full of cash. Well, it's not his laptop, it's ours. It's belonging in the house. The envelope, ma'am. I say, you know, it's nothing to do with me. No, no, I can... I, I understand, but sadly, th this is a part of the job. You see, we've got to execute the high court writ. Stuart goes to see whether he can find the assets he overheard Mr Oliver talking about on the phone. 100% he cannot walk into this house talking about somebody can't pay after bro and them heard him say he got $2,000 in a white envelope. You cooked. You even cooked yourself. All you had to do was stay quiet, really. And in a cupboard, he spots an envelope. Mm. Oh, find the cash. W hiding, mom. W hide. How much is that? Well, I've got 2350 the cash would cover almost half the money Darren owes. Set up a payment. Gonna count, don't double check that, mate. Stuart is confident that the cash in the envelope does belong to the debtor, but before he seizes it, he calls the office for advice. Uh, I just thought I'd bring you up to speed just with regards to this case. We've come to the property. Um, uh, she phoned What's him that? straight away, and the first thing he said was go into the back and hide the money. What was this? Hold on. But before he seizes it, he calls the office for advice. Uh, I just thought I'd bring you up. What is that? Is this a fresh water, a rainwater well? What is this? That's gas storage? Never seen nothing like this. <laughs> I think it's a water tank. I don't think it's gas. Gas is insane. Water makes sense to speed just regards to this case we've come to the property um, uh, she phoned him straight away and the first thing he said was go into the back and hide the money she I found the money was £2,920 it was in a, in a cupboard in an, open, in an open envelope so we can seize that can't we yeah yeah alright no worries cheers Kev just thought I'd double check that's all mate the office have given Stuart permission to seize the money, but he's still £1,500 short of the full balance. Stuart goes to inspect the Range Rover on the driveway. The range is worth more than 15. That's open. He calls the office to see if the car is free of finance. Hi, Mike. You all right, pal? 
Could you do HPI for me, please? But then the debtor, Darren, finally arrives home. This should be negative. Got to go. And he wants answers. Oh yeah. When you hop over a fence like this, like you Big Show or 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 Undertaker or or Kane or Kurt Angle or The Rock or Stone Cold Steve Austin, it's really time. It's really time to get negative. Go go. And he wants answers. I meant to give seven days notice, I thought. Just been like yeah, seven days. I've not received it. You say that all the time. I've not seen it. You say that, that's an excuse you have not yeah. sent a letter. I'm saying, I haven't completely. Yeah, hey, where's it happening? Yeah, where's it happening? I'll go and get your copy of it, Sean. No, I've got to see the original that's come. Why would you see the original? It'll be at your house. Well, I can't afford to pay it. Well, we've that. already got £2,920. It's not my money. Well, you just said, Mum, go and hide my money. Yeah, it's not my money. It's yep. going to be kind of stuff for me, Dad. I'm going to have to ring the police because you can't Re come in. Honestly, ring the police, no problem at all. Don't worry about it. Can't you take stuff? Yes, we can. You can't. How yeah. can you? Because we've got a high court rate, sir. We need the remaining amount. Stuart If we do start removing too. goods, it goes up to five thousand one hundred ninety-one. Yeah, I can't pounds. Totally, that's I you can't. But then, realizing that the debt could escalate if he doesn't face it head on, Darren makes a U-turn. So what is it? I'll just pay. Yeah. Just pay right. Yeah. Four, three, five, nine, yeah, so yeah. fifty cents. Minus. So yeah. yeah. So how can you pay it? Is this the car here, sir? Bro. With the nearly four and a half thousand pounds paid in full. Bro. You have the means. What's the if the high court is at my door, like and I got it, I'm just they're not leaving. It's it's you're cooked. They they're getting their money. Stuart and Ian's perseverance has paid off. See you later, mate. He really Take had it no easy leverage. anyway, all right. Okay. Alright, thanks a lot. The handshake is crazy. Right. Sorted. Job done. Right, let's go, mate. I'll tell you what. Why would you put your parents through all that? Just, just bloody pay it. When he had it as well. Yeah. When he had it. Research has shown that borrowing in the UK is currently at a level unseen since the financial crisis of 2008. A leading UK advisory body in England and Wales deals with an average of nearly 3,500 new debt problems every day. All I'm trying to do is read, like, dang, hold on, okay. More than 3,000 county court judgments against individuals are issued every day in England and Wales. Oh, so, okay. It's an oil tank for central heating. Got it. Got it. Okay, and it's expensive to fill it even halfway. Yeah, I would imagine. They said, yeah, be my guest. We won't put one of those automatic swipe things on you. You can fill it yourself, but it's going to be very, very expensive. <clears throat> High Court Enforcement Agents Gary Ball and Matt Highway are in Solihull, West Midlands. They're here to recover almost £10,000 owed to a car finance company. We've got uh, Mr Bupinder Singh and he owes just short of £10,000, £9,920.28 to a finance company. Is this a nice area, Solihull? It is, nice round here. Got it. The debtor, Bupinder Singh, bought a car on finance, but failed to stick to his repayment agreement or return the car. And a TT outside. The finance company took the case to the county court and Mr Singh lost. The company then escalated it to the high court and now Mr Singh must pay the money he owes in full today. Hello. Hello, sir. Good morning. I'm looking for uh, Bipinder Singh. He's not here. No? Can you call him for me? Is yeah, it your son or...? No, no, no. He's not my son. Brother? He's, he's my older brother. Your older brother? No, he's my younger brother. All oh, right, OK. Could you give him a call for us then, please, sir? Yeah. Thank I haven't you. got his number. You don't have your brother's number? Yeah. He, he, he does stay here, but he's not here at the moment. I haven't got a number for him. So. Right, OK. All right, explain the situation to you then, sir. So, my name's Matthew White. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. <laughs> Uh, and we're commanded to attend the property today to either collect the payments or to seize goods to the value of. That's what we're here to do. 
Yeah, that's him. So you, you're adamant that you're not able to contact your brother? If right. you give me your details, yeah, and I can get him to, can get him to contact you. No, no, that's fine. We'll carry on and do our job, so thank you. Suspicious of the man's claims that he can't contact his own brother, the agents make peaceful entry into the house so they can investigate further. All right, okay. So is it is a property near that belongs to your dad, is there? Yes, it does, yeah. Okay, well, you're going to need to prove that then, sir. So if there's items of the property that do belong... Bro, you're 55. What do you mean my dad's property? You're not... What are you talking about? You're not a uni student. <laughs> Come on, now. You got a sweater on top of your your button-up shirt with a tie. You're like, come on now. Stop calfing out here. It's you. Don't you, Father? You need to prove that to us. We, we, we've been living here for about 37, 38 years. Yeah. So we can't give you receipts for everything. So otherwise, I suggest that you, we contact your brother yeah. and we can deal with him. Yeah. Rather than have to go down that yeah. line. But we're here to get the matter resolved, OK? Can you take a seat? Yes, of seat? course, sir, yeah. yeah. Oh, Smash it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It appears that the man does have his brother's number, after all. You know when someone says to me, I don't have a contact number for my brother? Yeah. Really, really hard, to, really hard to believe, isn't it? We get lied to every day, hundreds of times per day. You know, we, when we hear a lie, we know it's a lie straight away. We'd love it if people just told the truth straight away, but, but they never do. It's, I think it's a bit of a human nature, you know, if you deny anyone being there, then we, they think they might, be, you know, turn around and go away. But, you know, we'll always dig a bit deeper. Ten minutes after the agents arrived, the man still hasn't been able to make contact with his brother. Okay, who's trying to get hold of him, sir? Huh? Who's trying to get hold of him? Who's trying to get hold of him? Yeah. I just rang his wife. You rang his wife? Yeah. Okay, so we should be getting a call in a minute. Yeah. Maybe that's not him. You'll have to it's have true. a chat with uh, Bupinder about that. With Bupinder seemingly out of reach, the agents have no choice but to start looking for assets belonging to him to seize. I'm going to wait for the call, now, have it. Look round. Yeah. Well, this is where uh, the Pinder and his wife stay. Oh, is it? All oh, right, okay. But just before the agents can start searching Bupinder's room, a call comes through. Yeah. That's his wife. She says she's trying to get older and she can't get older. Okay, all right, no problem. We'll carry on and do our job then. The agents continue their search. But then Gary spots a plastic bag. Where's a start, mate? Right? Full of coins. It's a little bit short, isn't it? Yeah. Gary starts to count the money, but it's clear there isn't enough here to even scratch the surface of Bupinder's £10,000 debt. If Mr uh, Singh wants to pay the outstanding balance, yeah. then we can, we can leave and go on our way. Absolutely uh, how, fine. How, how, did you, how did you pay? How do you come Cash, credit or debit card? £175, Matt. How much, right? 175. Okay. The difficulty with large debts at residential properties is generally there isn't going to be sufficient goods um, to cover the amount we're looking for. You know, for instance. I'm surprised that that was 175 pounds. I obviously don't know how pounds and 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 pence work yet. Um, it's a learning curve, you know. Since if we're looking for 10,000 pounds, then we're probably looking to to recover. You know, fifty or sixty thousand pounds worth of goods to cover that at auction. Um, there's very few people that've got that amount of money in the house. The agents have now been in the house for half an hour. There's still no sign of the debtor, and with little else of value to remove apart from the coins, it looks as if the agents have hit a dead end. But then the case takes an astonishing turn. Hello. Hello. Who's this? Hey. Who's this? Who's this fella? Hello, mate. <gasps> this is not your brother. Yeah. Yeah. Hiding under the bed. Yeah. Hiding yeah. under the Bro, you're a grown man. Hiding from debt collectors under a bed. Like you're in a Monsters Inc. movie. Bro, get up. What are you doing? Beyond down bad. This is the this is insane. Bro hopped out from under the bed with arthritis and everything. He barely could get up out of there. The bed, sir. The bed. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen this all that. In an extraordinary twist, it seems that the debtor has been hiding in the house all along. 
Now Matt and Gary will have to work hard to get this bizarre case resolved. They're not taking my change. Let me get it. Debt of nearly the found was a back of an extraordinary turn. <laughs> Who's this fella? <laughs> Hello, mate. <gasps> this is not your brother. I had to see that again. Hiding what under the, the bed. Do? Hiding under the bed, sir. The bed. Yeah. Now that the agents are face to face with the elusive debtor, they need to get this case resolved one way or another. He's here apparently. Yeah, apparently he was, he, he, he was sleeping on the floor. So if you if you think that I believe yeah. that you didn't know the gentleman was here, well, all right, well, and he didn't know that we were here, then know. you're insulting my intelligence. I didn't know. He's hiding under a quilt, sir. Yeah. I don't go around. Yeah, I know. Looking I'm just, under quilts. I'm just saying that I. I'm just saying to you that okay. we've been in and out here. And I've been sitting here talking. I think you know exactly what's the matter, sir. You've been here all along, hiding, un hiding under the duvet. What's happening? You know exactly what I mean, sir. From the court. I think he knows what we're here, sir. Okay. He's, he's been awake all along. Let's not insult our intelligence, sir. Matt needs to make it clear what Bupinder That's must crazy. do next. There's an outstanding balance of £9,920.28. Bupinder was hiding under the bed. Bupinder under the bed. That's crazy. A must do next. There's an outstanding balance of £9,920.28 pence <laughs> that you're at the county court major libel for on the 23rd of the 5th. Yeah. Don't, did you have finance out from somebody? Is it vehicle finance or? Yeah. yeah, okay. So you've not paid it. Mate, you don't need to stop. The only thing I'll stop, I'll sort your money out. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. If you want to get the payment sorted then. With Mr. Singh promising to young. pay, the agents give him time to get the money together. It's only cost, but you know, I was counting the money, mate. My foot actually touched touched him. It's in the now. How weird is that? <laughs> you have a plain enforcement hide and seek, mate. Very strange. Never fails to be amazed in this job. He's even got the money to pay, apparently. We even got his wife on the phone. Where is the house? We see things on the, the normal. Not gonna lie, if you're gonna tell a lie, lie like that. You know what I'm saying? You gotta go fully in. Where is the house? It was almost pulled it off. We see things on the, the normal run of mill that people will think are absolutely crazy. It's a very different job enforcement, very different to any other job, and it throws up all sorts of surprises. The agents have been at the house for almost two hours when a woman arrives with a bundle of cash. You got that, mate? One, two, three, four. No, no, no. Imagine having the money and hiding under the bed to not pay the money. That's insane. You're too grown for that. You clearly have money, you've got money management skills. You have $10,000 out of thin air. You have it on hand is what I'm saying. And you are hiding under the bed as a grown man. Like, bro, grow up. You got that, mate? One, two, three, four, five grand. How much you got that, mate? 4,920 pounds. There's the 80 back from the 10,000. After trying to evade the agents, Mr. Singh's debt is paid off in full. All right, that's all for you. And we're all done. OK, thank you, sir, for your help. OK, appreciate it. Cheers, sir. Thank you. All right, thanks very much. Well done, mate. Results. It's amazing the lengths people go to the minute to try and evade enforcement. 52 and 52 it's years of age he's, and he's hiding under his bed. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, 52. I stopped doing that when I was six. When, when, he can, <laughs> when he can get the money that he owes? Within, within an yeah, hour? Within an hour. Yeah. Enforced? Enforced, mate. Good job. It's ridiculous.